So next up, I'd like to introduce Joanne Wolferman from Nielsen, who's the VP of Strategic Partnerships. Round of applause for Joanne, everybody. So Joanne is responsible for overseeing all of Nielsen's identity data partnerships and data onboarders. She's been with Nielsen for over 10 years. She's a fellow sufferer of allergies, as I am as well. Um, I went out on Joanne's LinkedIn and I found a great quote, quote from one of um, her vendors. Said, she's a driving force to ensure success and is a key contributor to leadership in the org. So I think we're lucky to have someone like Joanne with Nielsen who's sort of her focus is in media measurement and measurement of data. So perfect person to be taking over as the next person to talk about how she uses data and technology. Joanne. Thank you. Yep. I will take the clicker. Thank you. Very kind words. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, like Tim said, I have been with Nielsen for over a decade. And if you know Nielsen, that's like I'm new. So um, we are, it's, it's very nice to be here in front of a, a kind of different audience. So if you've heard anything about Nielsen lately, um, hopefully you've heard some of our recent news about Nielsen One which is really the next evolution and the next iteration of Nielsen measurement and Nielsen ratings. And so what Nielsen 1 is going to be, it's going to be a single uh, deduplicated cross-platform measurement product that's going to measure every platform, every screen with really consistent metrics. Um, Nielsen 1 is one single product suite and it's going to have four underlying products within it. The first of that is Nielsen One Ads. That will be followed by uh, content planning and analytics. And Nielsen One Ads is actually going to be available later this year in 2022. The rest of the uh, kind of product components will follow with a full solution suite being available in 2024. So let's go over more about kind of what we're going to accomplish here. So we know that in order to make a really effective solution for marketers, that there are three key principles we have to adhere to. So we know that Nielsen One has to be comparable. Obviously, Nielsen is known for TV ratings. It's something we do very well. We've been doing it for a long time. But we really need to make sure that we're incorporating not only linear television measurement, but digital as well. And we're doing it the same way, in the same language, the same metrics, um, and bringing those two audiences together in a really deduplicated way for holistic measurement. After we accomplish comparability, we need to make sure that we're looking at complete coverage. And what I mean by that is we need to make sure that we're covering every broadcaster, every publisher, every small website, um, every local news station, so that content or advertising in any corner of the marketing la landscape will have metrics, will have the same methodology, the same timeliness of delivering of um, ratings and measurement information, so that it's leveling the playing field for all marketers and all content providers. And then lastly, we're looking at consistency. What we've done so far, the foundation that we've laid for video content, video advertising now, um, obviously this is continuing to iterate. The devices that we have today are going to look very different from the devices that we're going to have in two, five, ten years. Um, but the solution that we're building has to be consistent. So it has to be forward looking and be able to incorporate kind of the future of media and the evolution of the next steps of all of the devices and all of the platforms that we can consume media on. So these three principles are all being captured by really two main things, which are Nielsen's metering methodology and the Nielsen panels that everybody here is probably aware of, but also the Nielsen ID system. So the Nielsen ID system is comprised of kind of three different types of data. The first one is our direct publisher integrations. So we actually have server-to-server -server integrations with some of our biggest publisher clients. So we're collecting first-party IDs, we're collecting other information directly from campaign observations so that we have in-house available to us from first-party way, um, all of that information directly from publishers. The second um, is our uh, data validated by real people. Those are our panels. We continue to enrich our panels, to grow our panels. 
Obviously, our panels are our most confident truth set to connect a person to a device, a person to their multiple devices. I mean, we've all probably got somewhere between three and 10 devices a person. So uh, our panels are a really confident way to, to give us that linking information. And then lastly, we also have our Nielsen ID graph. The ID graph is comprised of external data sources, uh, one of which is Infutor. Um, but we have a number of external data sources um, that are all contributing to the Nielsen ID graph, which gives us census level data. It's the scale that we need to do that coverage that I was talking about before. Um, so between these three things, we're able to really identify people to their devices. Um, so these three components that I just mentioned, this is kind of a, a concise way that we're ultimately giving very uh, synthesized look at marketing or the audience reach of either content or ads. So with this census level or the scale data sets that I mentioned before from partners that we're working with like Infutor, they're giving us demographics on everybody in the United States attached to their devices um, so that we can really understand in a deduplicated way and the deduplication is coming from those other pieces like our panel so we're really able to synthesize person A might be a female, 42 years old, and she's attached to these three devices. First person B might be a male, 64. He's attached to these three devices. Um, but what we're really trying to offer is people-based measurement, right? Obviously, we know everybody's got a litany of different ways that they're consuming this content, but ultimately, we're trying to understand the people and the consumers behind those devices and who's actually watching that ad or who's watching that TV show. So ultimately, all of this is feeding into, you know, kind of the, the big highlight here is obviously the deduplication across all of the platforms that a person could be coming across content, coming across marketing, um, which is really this audience reach story which is really the first step or a foundational step to being, under, to being able to link much more, right? Once you've got your audience reached, then we're able to link additional data sets, outcome data sets, um, more advanced audiences beyond just age and gender. But it's really um, laying that first kind of core step and understanding an audience who's really consuming a marketing campaign or, or content. Um, so, with that, I thank everybody for their time. I'll pass it back to you, Tim.